helps them. He is much never this long to say, oh, why because you make the best smell and this day, but this one's saying, no, the most good. Alexander Quinn here, Starseed Navigating the Light. Today we're going to be talking about what is multidimensionality. Let's play. The extracts coming up next will be coming from my book and it will discuss some um, sort of quite nicely good intro into what it's really all about. Multidimensionality is we are accessing lots of dimensions at all times. That's why it's called multidimensional. So I'm going to pass it over to my friend Alice. And she's going to guide us through, and then I'm going to see you at the end. Here we go. Thank you, Alexander Quinn. You really are a handsome little devil. If I was 20 years younger and single, maybe you and I could have shared more than a fascination for multidimensionality. But hey-ho, you can't win them all. Let's get started on what this all means then. The dimensions are a means of organizing different planes of existence according to their vibratory rate. Each dimension has certain sets of laws and principles that are specific to the frequency of that dimension. The inhabitants of each dimension operate within that plane because their consciousness vibrates in resonance with the frequency of that dimension. The higher you are to the highest dimension which we will set at 12, the closer you are to creator slash god and are a creator god yourself. That is the basic concept. We are ever working to become closer to god. Creator and become godlike ourselves, without the ego. The dimensions have been referred to in many different ways. They have been referred to as many different things in the past but have also been known as the layers of the universe, densities, and the different realities of the world we live in. Mathematically speaking, there are various descriptions of the dimensions that express what they are in more linear terms, however, they do provide much conceptual room for existing within these different levels. For example, the first dimension would be a line connecting two points. There is no depth and no height, only a width. You can call this the x axis. Consciousness on this level would be extremely basic, and as far as science, both mathematically and spiritually, there is little or no consciousness in the first dimension as it is only a building block giving us a foundation upon which to begin. Basic some may say, but an x-axis if you will, is a starting point and there must always be a beginning. For the second dimension we have added height or the y-axis. Think of any flat figure, like a triangle or a two-dimensional shape like a square that you might look at on a flat piece of paper. It is at the second dimension that life begins to take shape. Everything we perceive in our world appears to have length, breadth and depth, however scientists have for many years now played with the idea that the universe is in fact a massive two-dimensional hologram with illusional qualities similar to the third dimension. For example in our present technological time we are able to create holograms on a flat 2D platform that appear to have length, breadth and depth. When you visit a museum you see these on the science floor or perhaps in the small hologram which exists on some credit cards these days. When you look at these 2D holograms, be it a face, you walk around the room with the face appearing to move and peer at you as you move around the room. This is known as motion parallax. So as you move your gaze things in the foreground seem to move faster than things in the background giving you a stereoscopic view which creates the illusion of depth, in turn looking 3D like. Various scientists around the world have explored that mathematically the universe could be two dimensional. It can be explained that on top of the third dimensional quality protruded by a flat 2D surface that color also can be drawn from this. If you look at an audio CD you can see various colors of the rainbow appearing due to refraction which is due to light waves. So perhaps with all of this in mind you might be able to construct a matrix based on a flat 2D foundation. What would it be like to actually live in that kind of reality? In the 3D world humans have lived in for so long we have become accustomed to a very wide and dynamic variety of emotional feelings and responses. Would living in the 2D illusion of length breadth and depth hinder the way we see the world? Would we only have limited perceptions of the world and would we feel only positive or negative feelings with little in between? 
This would equate to fear and love and nothing else? This would be a basic reality. It isn't proven completely that we live in a 2D matrix and is far less likely, however the science does ask some interesting questions. The third dimension simply put includes volume and the ability to obtain cross-sections from objects. You can think of this dimension as space without time. Things contain volume and mass. They are tangible to the touch. Although there are theorists that claim this is still illusionary and we are in a matrix-style simulation, this is the physical world we are used to living in such as the physics of the air we breathe and laws of nature as the sciences which are taught early on at schools around the world. One can feel objects in 3D-dimensional reality. You pick up a pencil and write on paper. There is action and reaction to various elements and the way they bond to each other atomically. Over the past century, the quest to describe the geometry of space has become a part of a larger quest in relation to theoretical physics with experts such as Albert Einstein embarking to explain the forces of nature as byproducts of the shape of space itself. Space has often been seen as having three dimensions while general relativity paints a four-dimensional universe. It becomes increasingly complex as you enter into the world of string theory with its 10 dimensions and 11 if you take an extended version otherwise known as M-theory. Other variations have been conceived by mathematicians that include 24 and even 26 dimensions. So there is some debate as to the exact number. There is a general consensus that rests nicely at 12 amongst some scientists and new agers. When ETs have left messages they have also hinted at 12. Albert Einstein played a great part in the story of dimensionality when in 1905, he published a paper describing the world as a four-dimensional setting, miraculously he was unknown to the world at that time. In his special theory of relativity, time was then added to the three dimensions of space that are known about. In the mathematics of relativity, all four dimensions are bound together. This is where the term space-time was then born. Einstein found that in turn mathematical tools came into being that radically transcended Newton's physics which enabled him to predict the characteristics of electrically charged particles. In his 4D model of the world, electromagnetism is accurately described. It has been said that the fourth dimension is also knowing an object's position in time which is essential to plotting its position in the universe. However what does physics look like outside of these ideas and did Einstein take into account other dimensions and their properties? As we increase into the fifth and beyond dimensions we start to see the rules of physics and mathematics begin to morph. There are the possibilities of multiple Earths simultaneously existing on different timelines, to the point of multiple universes that are infinite. What of living in these realities and the direct influence it would have on life sociologically and psychologically, how would it affect our world and the way in which we evolve in terms of consciousness? As you transcend through dimensional frequency, vibration, harmonics, acoustics, electromagnetic fields, not only intensity but spectrum broadness also begin to transform. The possibilities begin to unfold. Imagine raising your vibration to a place whereby you look at a rainbow in the sky and see colors unseen before as you perceive visual stimulus in the color spectrum that was unobtainable at lower densities. For this reason humankind finds it somewhat difficult to express from a 3D point of view what fifth dimensional reality might be like, with the comparison being that you ask a man or a woman to describe a color they have never seen before. We do however have direct information from other beings both non-physical and physical who have come from these places who describe in eloquence what these realities feel like. On top of this there are also some very enlightened spiritual people on earth who have transcended to higher vibrations and given accounts throughout history and in modern times. We have described the concept of ascension which is linked to the raising of awareness whilst transitioning into higher realms or dimensions. Another way that this could be explained is like the ocean. Imagine the ocean floor. It's dark and there are many atmospheres of water pushing down on all physical things at great pressure. Things down there are sluggish and what life dwells down there has learned to survive. There is little thriving down there. 
This could be said for the current 3D reality in the past of Earth. As you transcend up out of the depths there is an increase in light and less pressure and new worlds open up, with life and different ecosystems. The fifth dimension would be parallel to raising oneself out of the water entirely and experiencing life in a way that is inconceivable due to the previous conditioning. We wouldn't be swimming, we would be floating and thereafter flying. Since 2012 it is widely regarded that we crossed the marker into lower fourth density with increasing pockets of fifth dimensionality depending on your personal spiritual and ascension status. Confusing? There is some confusion on how the dimensions operate in real time. Various theories have been argued and some say you can only be in one dimension at a time, which is contradictory to the phrase multidimensional which implies simultaneous, or dimensions all happening together at the same time. Therefore you are only able to see in the dimension you are in or part of the next, whilst the enlightened being at the top may look throughout all the levels as they have full cosmic awareness. After many years of research speaking to both people and listening to channeled data both from angelic and galactic beings, it has become apparent that there is a common thread. Third dimensionality can be lived in only within a body operating at lower consciousness. As consciousness increases awareness raises into lower fourth density experiencing the parameters of both with dualistic qualities. However once fifth dimensionality is completely achieved all the dimensions then become available simultaneously depending on which aspect of the consciousness you are dealing with. Divine order and unity is not about separation like the third and fourth densities which still have heavy characteristics of duality, being light and dark. Another way to understand this is a building. Imagine we discuss this on the assumption there are 12 dimensions and 12 floors acting as stories of the building. All the floors are in the building simultaneously. Once consciousness exceeds the confines of the third and fourth floor you get the key to the elevator and you can begin to travel up and down to the other floors that have always been there all existing at once depending on your consciousness awareness. For example, an ego-driven reptilian isn't able to adapt to the fifth dimensional qualities of unconditional love and isn't able to ascend past higher fourth. Whereas the Pleiadian can traverse over and uncap the rest of the dimensions to some degree. What you have is a system whereby you have three to four then all. This is why the more advanced multi-dimensional beings find it harder working in or visiting lower densities under the fifth and it is the equivalent to our previous water metaphor. They would be returning back to the dark murky depths of the ocean with multiple atmospheres pushing down. This is why the physiology of ETs is different to human anatomy, some are built for lighter less dense environments often with different bone tissues. This knowledge comes from whistleblowers who worked at underground bases such as Emery Smith who operated as a chemical warfare specialist, biotech warfare specialist, medical doctor and surgeon for various black military funded projects in various underground bases. He has since become a whistleblower for the ET community exposing the work he did on real life ETs. His story, like many others can be found on the net and YouTube. The ETs themselves through channeling have discussed 12 levels of density, often with beings becoming non-physical 7 upwards. More commonly 3 to 6 beings engage with a biological vessel or body. Let us now explore how the dimensions affect our lives directly and how they progress outside of laws of physics as we know it. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Much love from me and Alexander Quinn. Thank you for watching. Please check out more videos on this channel.